telling me that we should do strategy instead. So that's what I prepared for today. Uh, strategy, today's subject, uh, improving, I will write here in the chat, improving our pieces. And please notice that when we speak about improving our pieces, it's not just about uh, the night, uh, move it here, there, and here, and some finally it will settle on the protected square. It's also about, uh, this includes uh, using our pawns to help our pieces, and uh, as well as pieces helping other pieces. Okay? I just wanted that to be uh, noticed that... Uh, if we are about to improve a knight, for example, sometimes a pawn can help the knight or another piece can help the knight. So it's about teamwork also, not about just some one piece doing all the work by, its, by itself. But very often we have several pieces involved in this kind of action, improving our pieces. All right, let's get started. I think we're uh, more people arrived, so I think this is a good moment to start. Let me add our first example here. Let's see if we can bring this one up. All right. Here we go. So great to see all of you again. Today's subject, improving our pieces. So this was a game played in the Spanish championship uh, recent, uh, two years ago. Uh, Santos Latasa with white, Huerga Leache with black. At this moment, black played a move knight d8. I think the idea, you can see clearly that this is a battle from the Nimsu India, no? The Nimsu India with e3. You get this kind of position. And something happened on the h file. The h file is now open. Um, it was interesting for black to play something like rook h7, pre preparing to go rook ah8. I think what white had in mind here was actually to swap queens just to avoid any troubles on the h file. And in the end game, I think white should be better here, mainly thanks to their. Bishop pair, and also, of course, there are chances of creating a mobile pawn center. However, the game didn't turn out like this because uh, in the game, black played knight d8 instead. So I think the idea that uh, Werga had was to attack this pawn, and if bishop c2, he would perhaps play rook c8 with some pressure along the c file. Uh, that's what I suspect happened when he played the move knight d8 here. Anyway, it's your move. I'll give you two minutes. Try to find the best way to continue here with the white pieces, okay? Remember today's subject, improving our pieces, all right? I'll ask you for, in total, three moves. That will be enough, I think. Yeah, three moves uh, from here. It's your move, white to play and get some clear advantage. Don't forget today's strategy. So Chessable only lets me choose one a specific line to be the correct choice. Some people are on the right track. I would happily give you half a point. However, I'm not able to here. There is only one one solution according to the platform. So um, you would it will say fail, but uh, I would say people like uh, Subham, Egmo, Guinea Pig, Torriches, or some Owen. You're rather close, I would say. But the closest. On this occasion is L008. Very, very close. And actually what, what you're saying, the engine is uh, happy with your solution. So uh, Greg Shahade also has an interesting idea. Yeah. So can we try again? We could, but I mean, uh, I think we should try to keep to the, to the plan because else we will end up just looking at two or three examples. And uh, I would like to go with more examples. So let's, uh, let's listen to L008. Who was so close to to repeating what happened in the game, but actually your choice was fine. The engine was fine with you, so with your solution. So, if you like, you can uh, uh, speak up and uh, let everybody know what what you found. Okay, so I I found e four. So the point is to uh, run e five. And at their takes, actually, we go bishop f4 and queen e6. And, well, I I played f takes e4 because uh -huh, I thought it's, it's, okay, it's okay. 
I thought this was a good pawn center. Yeah, so it is. I, it is. It, it's excellent what you play. Uh, it, it's perfectly fine to, to take here also. I don't know what I would play with black here. Did you look? Did you have time to look at uh, knight xc4? Uh, I think we have d5. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. This must be very promising for, for white. But okay, I'll play something like a queen, uh, queen e7 maybe. Can I go there? Maybe. Yeah. Queen g3 maybe. says Wacky Hill. Yeah, this looks scary. I don't know. But can I play Queen h4? Or, or did I lose something? No? Let me know. Today I had a second shot of the vaccine. So uh, let me know if I hang up a queen or something. Queen h4, bishop c7. Okay, but now we're, we're drifting away a little. I, I see what you mean, uh, Wacky Hill. Yeah, you can play like that. But but okay, some threat here also. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, interesting variation, but uh, let's go back here. Uh, L 8 Let's go back after e4. I mean, that's let, let's go from the very beginning. Black shouldn't have played here knight d8. This was a bad idea because Black wanted to threaten this pawn, but also they lost control of the center, and that's what the Spanish grandmaster uh, exploited here by playing e4. What's the idea of e4? Well, we already know, of course, in this structure, it's important to uh, go for a sp strong pawn center like L. 008 says, however, another idea is to improve that bishop. And that's what happened here. So bishop f4, and after queen e6, you can take on e4, it's okay. I'm perfectly uh, sure it's okay. But I think there is an even stronger move here. So, um, if you like, you can try again. Um, L008. You can have back, you can have the pawn again. Any other move which uh, comes to your mind? Oh, uh, maybe g5? Yeah, you could also play g5. Interesting. I think that's also something that he considered in the game. I'm not uh, completely sure what will happen here. Maybe I can take on d3, and if you take on f6, I'll just ignore that. I'll play something like king g8, maybe. Um, maybe not 100% clear. But there is a better move. E Egmo found this move, so... Uh, okay, we can listen to Egmo. What is your move, uh, Egmo? After, uh, let's see here, if I go back. There is no private chat. Do you want me to, should I make it private, the chat? Okay, no problem. If that's better. <laughs> I, I was uh, thinking that it didn't matter. Okay, Egmo, you're, you're on. What okay, we, we play bishop e5. The point uh -huh. is, black taking on d3 is met with g5. Sure. And if you take e2, I just take on f6 with the bishop. Okay. Um, okay, it's I don't have the. Little, I, don't, I don't have the. I don't have. I don't oh, have you have, don't have the pawn. Sorry, I'll, I'll give it back to you. Okay, you can take on e2, I guess. Aha. Yeah, this this looks very nasty for black. I don't know how black is supposed to to defend here, because you you're even yeah. threatening to play rook e8, right? I don't know. Can I play queen c6 or am I just slaughtered here? D five, yeah, nice. Uh, um, queen yeah, takes I'm, I'm... a queen takes a four. My, but <laughs> okay, but it looks uh, already very suspicious for black, doesn't it? But okay, we, we should probably look at this. Yeah, so uh, if I take back, I guess you will mate me on the H file now. Queen, H... no, you cannot play that. No, I have oh, my wait. queen there. Okay, because you played D five. But maybe if you do without D five, you could do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So th this looks crushing. No, you have uh, all the pieces in the attack. Uh, yeah, I don't believe I can survive here. King f8, and probably you will mate me somehow. It's, it would be too good to be true that I can save myself here. Yeah, rook e1, and okay, but I have bishop e6, maybe, and king d7. Oh, I'll do, I'll make it private in the chat. I, I can see there are some problems in the chat now. Okay, d5. Okay, what's up here? You want to play queen f6 and mate me? So, did I? I think I died here, no? Yeah, I think it's over now because I'll have to play something like queen d6 and then you can play rook e1. And yeah, you win the exchange at least. So I think your variation is fine. In the game, however, they didn't play like this. After e takes d3, they did play bishop e5, but they didn't play g5. Maybe we should have one more look or, or it's it's not necessary. Um, if any anybody can see a way in which black can defend here, please let us know. But, but I, I think this looks rather forced, what, what we were looking at. Bishop takes and King g8, yeah, and rook takes it too. I think this is winning also, yeah. Uh, 
this would be very, very promising. In the game, however, he played another move. He played knight f4. So the, the idea is, is similar, no? because next turn he played uh, g5. Maybe he was short on time. Maybe he didn't see all that, that, that you saw with d5 and so on. He just played in a very simple way. And here, finally, white's uh, attack was too strong. Um, here he didn't take on h8, but he played simply queen g3, so that he can go rook h2 next turn. And that's actually how the game uh, ended, something like this. And white was mated on h, black was mated on h8. So, uh, oh, Egmo says, I thought in the beginning e4 detects e4. Let's see again. e4 detects e4. F takes e4. Yeah, that's what we were speaking about in the first place, right? And if knight takes d4, we sack on g4. But you cannot sack on g4 because you're mated, right? So you, you would have to play bishop f4 first. Yeah, exactly. And I would have to put my queen somewhere. I don't know where exactly. What if I play my queen on, put my queen on e6 so that I force you to play d5 so that you don't have the stronghold? Or oh, that doesn't matter. Or I don't know. You would. What would you play now, Egmo? You can. Uh, I can give you back the. The, the move, if you like. Um, what would happen? Yeah, bishop c4. Interesting. Sack, sack there to uh, deflect the black queen. And then you can take on g4. But maybe I shouldn't take back this time, should I? Or should I take back? I don't know. I don't see this clearly. Okay, uh, you can take, but okay, this is also hanging. So unless you see some forced mate or something, uh, I guess this is too, too, too clever. So... If we go back, I mean, we're speaking about strategy, but as you can see, already it became very tactical. But if we try to stay to the subject here, knight d8 is a dangerous move for black, I mean, risky move. As soon as you uh, retreat your pieces from the center in this kind of position with the central tension, it's very dangerous. So immediately, this is kind of punishment move. Immediately white pushes e4 and after d takes, I think it's okay to take also, but I mean, this is very nice to play with white, right? Bishop e4 and bishop e5. So that's how the game went. And g5 came up and knight e4. What was the point? Simply, we wanted to improve our bishop. All right, let's uh, move on. This example I think nobody knew about, but the next example, I think there is a first, fair chance that you know about this game. Um, I think you might have seen this game, so we'll see. Remember that different pieces are involved. In this occasion, it was the bishop which was improved. But perhaps on our next example, it will be some other piece. Or it's the bishop again. We'll see. So here you're playing with white pieces. Uh, maybe you know this example, maybe you don't. You can see clearly it's some kind of French where white has sacked a few pawns. I think it's this variation with bishop e7 maybe, with some g5. I think I don't think I've seen this. Okay, I hope that's the case. <laughs> anyway, you're playing with white. You can see that you have a very active position. But actually, white lost this game in the end. But I would like to see how you can... Yeah, the bishop is probably not going to improve because there is no bishop, right? Uh, you'll have to see which piece should be improved here, okay? I don't think it's that difficult, but uh, I'll, the third move will be a little uh, difficult for you. So uh, my third move, you will have to be careful. The first two moves, I think they will be simple. But please check carefully move number three. I don't follow Dragon Ninja. That's it's not tactics today, you know. Today people wanted strategy, so I prepared strategy. Yeah, I see your idea, of course. But try to find the best choice. There are different uh, ideas here. Okay. Wow. Sacrifices. I didn't know that was possible. Nobody plays the the way Grandmaster Jones played. Wow. This is, by the way, Jones with the white pieces and Howell with the black pieces. A British championship two years ago. Two of the most outstanding British players involved in this very fierce battle. Uh, oh, some people are dropping a rook here. Hey, this is not Christmas. How can you play like that? Adi Chess, awesome, Owen, Tori Chess, Southam. Uh, careful, yeah. <laughs> Please, remember, tactics is also around here. Yeah. Chess Ryo, 
how come you give away a rook like that? Christmas came too early this year. Okay, so who is close? Nobody's close. Nobody's close. Did they play rook takes eight? They certainly didn't play rook takes eight. Pikachu, you're giving away the e5 pawn. Is that really intentional to give away that pawn? We don't have a single person who, who got the right move. No, we had, we had. Wacky Hill, you're, you're the closest one. Yeah, good work, Wacky Hill. You got it. You just have to adjust your last move. So we have a winner here. Yeah, nice. Nice. And I think it's the only one. Yeah, no one else was even close. So, uh, Wacky Hill, uh, let's first check the, the right answer. And then we will speak about uh, other options here. Okay. So where is uh, Wacky Hill? Uh, Wacky Hill, okay. So you have the pawn, I, I don't remember. Could you speak or you couldn't speak? Knight f1. That's exactly what uh, Jones played in the game. So the idea is clear. The knight will come to h5. It will harass the bishop. And also we will have plans like knight f6. I mean, if you just look at all white's pieces, I don't know what's your opinion, but my way of seeing this position is that this is the least active piece right now. So it makes a lot of sense to improve exactly that piece. Okay. Uh, remember, remind me later on which moves you were saying, because I'll shift to the notation so that I can see what actually would happen in the game. Uh, Black played in the game Queen E7. They were probably very scared about the move Rook C7. And here Wacky plays Knight G3. Jones also played that. And at this moment, you can see that if Black castles, for example, uh, we could just continue, right, uh, with our plan, uh, Wacky. We can just continue with the attack. Aha, and this is already very, very dangerous for, for black, as you can see. The rook is coming there. Um, these pieces aren't playing and so on. So in the game, Howell played instead f6. And it's a clever choice, because now if you continue with knight h5, actually I could take on e5, and even if this is very promising for, for white, at first sight it looks crushing, this for white. However, if you look carefully, you can see that when I castle here, I'm very lucky that I'm threatening this pawn on f2. So I win a tempo somehow here. I'm not saying that uh, black is uh, better or anything. Probably white is still clearly better, but there will be some chances of survival here, perhaps, with queen f6 next. And yeah, desperately try to play e5 and, and bring out the bishop somewhere. Um, queen g3, okay. What if I play queen g7? e5 is on my menu, no? It's, it's the main priority for me here. And I have a few extra pawns, so I can give away one of them. You can win a pawn. You can take on c8, something like that? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. But okay. I'll play rook f7. I'm still alive here. No? Yeah, but I'm, I'm two pawns uh, up. I mean, I can come here with the king and Oh, I could give away this pawn, maybe. I don't know. I'm not a French expert. Uh, somebody else might might tell, might uh, explain. Maybe b5 is better, so that you can put your rook on a7. I don't know. I think black is better, yeah. I mean, we have compensation, but it's a, it's a pity that the queens are off. No? We would love to have the queen still on the board. So knight, knight f1 is, is the right way to go. After queen e7, knight e3. Black played here f6. But actually, there is a way to win the game now. Wow. How can you do that? I don't follow. That's too ambitious. And, and also, this bishop was really bad, the bishop on c8. Why should we take away? Knight f5, okay. I'll give back material, you know. This is a typical situation where you should just give back material. Okay, I'll give back something in the end. Yeah, I'll take here. I'm giving back. I'm giving back. Wow. Did, did you trick me here somehow? <laughs> King... Where should I put my king? Uh, nowhere. I I'm already lost. Or could I play king f7, maybe? Let me know if I drop something. No, remember, second vaccine, that's a serious thing. Queen g4, what's going on here? But there is some ba back rank, mate, don't you think? Can I just take here, or...? Oh, then you're mating me on... Oh, queen g7, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, that's a mis misprint. Let's see here. Queen g4. <laughs> um... Anyone with a sharp tactical eye, queen takes e6, rook takes king f8, queen g7. I saw that variation. I saw that. That's my first intention, but I saw that uh, my opponent had prepared here queen g7. So this should not be played. Let's see again. But there should be something here, of course. Uh, there should be something. There must be something. 
queen e7 after queen takes e6. How is that? b5. I have comments b5. I like that move. b5. That, that must be the best move. Yeah. Wow. Th th this looks promising for black. Doesn't it? White is struggling here, I think. Just shut out the rook. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Or f5 was also suggested. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably that also works. But I like b5 from practical uh, considerations. I like this move. But okay, f5 must, must also win. So this is too much. Please notice when you sacrifice, there's nothing wrong with sacrificing, like Mikhail Tal style. However, Mikhail Tal wouldn't take this bishop on c8 because he knows it's a bad piece. He would focus on other things in the position. So, uh, anyone, how do you think white should continue here? The good thing about f6, it's somehow trying to break white's uh, door square dominance. The bad thing about f6 is that the king is becoming more weak. Isn't it? So having yeah, you got it. Okay, Kugel Chess, you can uh, you can join us on this one. Where is Kugel Chess? Okay, you can play white now. Queen h5. I'm forced to play queen f7. No, I'm not forced. But let's look at that one first. And now, don't play to no, not not too pretty, not too pretty. Okay, this might be possible also, but. I can escape. Can't you improve the move order, Kugel Ball? Kugel Chess, sorry. What if you improve the move order? Yeah, everybody's... No! Everybody's saying another move here. I'm sorry. I'm still alive here, I think. There is a better move here. Yeah, they are male bombing now the chat. Uh, but I don't like to say the moves. So you have to find it. Yeah, bravo. That's it. Now it's very, very bad for black, as you can see. I think it's already over. We didn't need the queens. Because we have so many pieces in the attack already. So it's not possible here to play queen f7, uh, in fact. So after queen h5, what black played in the game was king d8. So that's that's the course of the game, if I'm not mistaken. And I think it was around here. Yeah, here, here he made a mistake. Here Jones played... Uh, oh, we have a question here. Egmo says, what if rook takes 8 rook takes 8 Knight takes it. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, we'll look at that. Okay. Egmo says, why don't we take on c8 and then we take on e6 so that if queen takes, we can go knight takes e7 and king f7 and we can take on h5. But is this really the best you can get? Uh, something like this? So, sorry. Is this really the best for you? Rook takes b7 first. Oh, okay, okay. But, okay, rook takes b7. I'll play king g6. Knight takes c5, you're going to mate me, but I'm going to take your knight. Or what am I missing here? I was watching Gawain Jones short and sweet on the King's Indian. Yeah, that's uh, interesting, Ryo. Yeah, that must be a great video. Uh -huh. I don't follow anymore. What? Uh, Wacky Hill, never mind. Yeah, or Egma, who is, who is speaking about this variation? But it's, it's completely unnecessary if we already saw that. Rook c7 is crashing. So let's stick to the most uh, practical choice here. Anyway, back to the game. In the game, um, he played, Howell played king d8. And here Jones played a move f4, which was uh, strong. And he was clearly better. After f takes e5, f takes e5, rook f8, rook b6. Very nice move, rook b6. But somehow black was able to fight back and they actually won the game in the end. But there was a better move here, you know. After king d8, there was a better move. We could have insisted here on our idea. We could have insisted here on the idea. But this is a difficult move. It's a typical computer move. Um, well, what can it be? F4 is natural, no? But there is a stronger move here. Hint. Our idea was to bring the knight to h5, right? So what if we, if we stick to this idea? All right. I'll, I'll do a quiz of this also, yeah? So you can look for yourself. So there will be a very pretty variation here. The people who were saying that they wanted to play knight takes, uh, how is it, rook takes e8, you will be rewarded now. Okay, here we go. But don't take that immediately. Yeah, don't take immediately. The first move is important. Hint, backward move, okay? Backward move. The first move is backwards. Okay, Wacky Hill, you were very close. First move, backward move, okay? Wacky Hill was extremely close. 
extremely close. And nobody else. Okay, Dragon Ninja, you're close also. Yeah, you're close. But you could have improved the move order, Dragon Ninja. And Royal XB also close. Okay. Um, so, time's... No, no, time's not up yet. Uh -huh. Wow. You were saying a lot of different moves here. Uh, Queen G4. Queen G4, maybe F5? Can I play F5 there, maybe? Or is there some problem awaiting me? Queen H3. And if I take on E5? Something will happen to me though. Rook takes E8 after F5. Well, that's complex. Uh... All right. I think uh, we're losing a little track here. Uh, let's, uh, let's stop this one and uh, let's listen to Dragon Ninja. Okay, Dragon Ninja, you're on. How would you continue with white here? Aha, queen h4, because now we're threatening to play knight h5, right? So if I take... Yeah, I was saying don't play that, it's passive. But but here it's... I mean, you're, you're swapping the passive piece on c8. But here it's actually an excellent idea. So here you took on e7. Don't do that. Look for more. Look for more. Exactly. Now we can see that the king cannot go to d7 because rook takes b7 is coming up. King e8 and now intermediate move and you win the game. Intermediate move, and you win the game. That's not an intermediate move. Here I can still survive. Look for... So yeah, I understand. But look for something better. Look for something better. This might not be entirely clear. I don't know. Maybe b5 or something. I have a few pawns there, right? Look for something better. Intermediate move, okay? I don't want to take on b7. I want to do it next turn. Something like that. Okay. Intermediate move. Yeah, everybody's saying in the chat... No, don't play that. No, no, that's too, too intelligent. No, don't play like that. I'll swap queens then. Don't do that. Don't let me swap queens, okay? Yeah, that's it. And you win the game. Because, yeah, king g7 is just rook takes b7. There is never mate and so on. Also, always knight f1. If, and, of course, if queen f7, you'll just pick up this one. And I guess this is... Well, let, let's see. This should be winning, no? Or maybe now we take. Or, or what do you think? Anyone with a sharp tactical eye. Queen takes and queen f5, right? Yeah, exactly. Queen takes and queen f5. I think we're going to get back the material in the end. Yeah. So, uh, what did we look at here? Very, very complex. I, I told you it was about strategy, but I feel like we're doing more cal calculation. Anyway, we're speaking about this knight. We're saying it's not very active. It's a good moment to try to activate that knight. That's what uh, Jones thought also. He played here knight f1. The knight is coming to h5. And yeah, let's 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 see very quickly. Knight g3, the knight will come here. F6, cl very clever try by Howell. Try to, to ruin your opponent's plans. However, after queen h5, we could see that black was in huge trouble. Uh, again, white is about to play knight h5. And tactically, black was already beyond salvation here. Okay, if you like, we can check very quickly your moves. Rook b3, I cannot take this uh, seriously. We cannot give, a, give up a rook like that. F4, some people were saying, I don't think, well, what can I say? It's not 100% related to the position, I think, F4. I mean, this is a typical idea in the French, but here maybe, I don't know. Can I castle and try to play F6 maybe quickly? Yeah, not that convincing. What else did you say? Rook C7 was uh, suggested by some people. Yeah, why didn't he play Rook C7? Maybe he didn't like castles? And he didn't know how to continue there? Maybe? Does Queen G4 work there? When, uh, Ryo? You can uh, unmute and uh, and let us know. When do you mean? Here? No. No. But then, when? Uh, please answer me. When? When would you, would you like to? Here, Queen G4, you mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll probably castle here if I can. Uh, sorry? No, but not here. But tell me when. I, I cannot uh, guess uh, what you're saying. The line we just looked at. We looked at so many lines, I don't know which particular line are we speaking about. You mean with knight f1? Like that? Yes, okay. Uh, what did he play? Queen e7, yeah. Knight e3, f6. Now, oh, after king f8. Oh, but that's... When is king f8, by the way? Is the, are you sure it's, it's relevant? Uh, let's see here, okay. King d8... 
Here you want to play queen g4? No. What do you want to play? Queen h4? Yeah, I must say this is a little confusing. Uh, sorry, queen g4 here. Yeah, okay, I don't know, queen g4, I, I have no idea. Uh, I mean, one move is f5 and another is f takes e5. I guess you have something prepared against those. You want to take here, maybe? But okay, I can take with the king, can't I? If I play f5, what will you play? I don't follow 100%. Rook takes, I take with the king. I'll try to hide there. Or, or you have something very strong here? Knight takes a 5 okay. I'll take back, queen takes. I cannot go to b8 due to knight c6. But can I go to c7, maybe? Oh, it was not like this? You take with a knight, you mean, on f5? All right. Oh, you're going to mate me now. Queen g5, is that possible? Or I'm getting mated? I must say this is a little confusing. But I guess I'm getting mated, yeah. Yeah, right. Rook takes and queen a4, right? Aha. Uh -huh. Is that what you mean, Rayo? Something like that? Or... Yes, okay. Yeah, maybe this is also possible. Yeah, it looks uh, promising, uh, what you're saying. It looks very promising. I don't know if I can take also. Is that possible? And if you take, I take with the king. Or is this also dead lost? Knight takes e6. And I move away my king. Oh, this piece is hanging also. Yeah, then it must be very critical. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, I guess this works also. Yeah, Ryo, okay. Uh, I mean, I would try king b8, but I don't think myself that I'm able to survive here. Maybe you can just take and bring in another knight. Yeah, it looks horrible. Aha. Uh -huh. So, yeah, okay. Safe to say, uh, both moves uh, might work here, but I like much more this one. No? I like, I think it's nicer, but, but okay. Yeah, this puzzle is complicated. I agree, but it's not my fault that we got until this point. My point was just in the beginning. I just wanted you to find this idea. But uh, yeah, it was so interesting that we continued. Let's bring up a little simpler quiz, okay? I think it's time for something much simpler. So here we go. We will bring up something much simpler. You won't need more than one minute for this puzzle, you know. I'll give you this puzzle and I'll give you only one minute because I think this should be easy for you. This is the kind of puzzle that you were expecting today. So here we go. Why to play and get a clear positional advantage, okay? One minute. And one hint for you guys. Avoid the opponent's counterplay. Please avoid the opponent's counterplay. L, you're very close. L008, you're, you found the right idea. Remember, we're speaking strategy today, no? Strategy. So, try to improve your pieces. Which white piece should be improved? How can we manage that? Okay, we will look into your variation, Ryan. We will look into your variation. Yeah, I think it's, it's possible to play like you say. But okay, once there are a few pieces on the board, these attacking plans in the Benko, they're not so convincing, perhaps. We'll see. The good thing is that I checked this with... Yeah, Wacky Hill, you got it. The good thing I checked this with the engine before, so I'm pretty sure uh, I have the right solution. Um, so let's uh, let's listen first to, to Wacky Hill. Let's listen to Wacky Hill first. Okay. Please tell us what is this about. We take. And why is it so important to take on... Yeah, I'll play my move first, and then you'll play yours. Aha. So why is it so important, Wacky Hill, to take on B5? Why don't you play straight away, bishop e1? Aha, because black can play knight e4. So this is a key plan if you play the banker with the black pieces. You must know about this plan of bringing the knight to the center, right? Better not uh, allow this with white. It's much better, like Wacky Hill says, first swap that knight. Okay, you can continue now, Wacky Hill. Okay, why are we doing this? Well... We will soon see. Yeah, only move. You got it. That's it. 
by this nice bishop maneuver, we have secured our queen side, which is usually black's uh, battlefield in this variation. Attack the pawn on b2 and so on. And uh, what is your plan here, uh, Wacky Hill? What are you playing for? Exactly. Sooner or later, white will try to push e5. We can play rook e1 and we can play e5. This is a typical idea if you play with white pieces against the bank. Anyway, now, now let's listen to other players. So this is the supposed solution, okay? I think it's very clear-cut. It's the a nice way in which we can avoid the opponent's counterplay. By swapping their most active piece, the knight which is dreaming of coming to d4, we swap it, and then actually the other bishop will be swapped also. I mean, we will also swap off the, the bishop, and in the end we are leaving them with their worst minor piece. Right? If we play bishop e1 immediately, yeah, you're right, uh, Girir. If you play bishop e1 immediately, black will play knight e4, and things might be a bit di different, no? It's not so easy to dislodge this knight. So if you look at the three black pieces, it's clear that their worst piece must be this bishop now, after the move f6. But also, our bishop is not so strong anymore on h4. Now, okay, let's look at some other plans. So Ryo wants to play f5. Okay, Ryo. Ryo wants to take first, and then to play f5. Yeah, I mean, I can see your idea. My bishop is not that good, but uh, now it's perhaps getting even worse. Yeah, I like very much this plan, like I'm saying, but okay, you, you want to play something else. Let's see what I can play against this. I should try to create counterplay on the um, on the b file, I guess. Maybe I should take first, and then I should play rook b8. Now my plan is to go queen b5. I guess if I can swap queens, that should help me, or, or am I wrong here? Also, I'm saying that maybe, I mean, in my wildest dreams, I will be able to put the bishop on d4. So what do we have to play? Bishop e1. Okay, I'll play queen b5. I guess you will swap on b5, else you will lose a pawn, right? And you will put your bishop on c3. Okay, I'll try to play bishop h6. So what is the verdict here? Is black lost here at, at this moment? Maybe I can cook up some sacrifice or maybe some other plan. I don't know. Rook a e1. There is no rook a e1. You can go rook f e1 or rook d e1. Rook, okay, rook d e1. All right. But I, I don't know what will happen next. Maybe I can take on f5. If you take with a pawn, maybe I can play c4, attack that pawn on, on the... Or maybe you will take with a rook on f5 instead. Yeah. So after all, maybe this is also playable. Maybe I should play rook b8. Don't even think about it. I'm not a seasoned Benko player. They would probably, at the, with the blink of an eye, they will sacrifice on B2. Uh, I don't know. I'm not 100 uh, convinced here, uh, Ryo. Yeah, Rook E2. Uh, I see what you mean, to avoid my, my sacrifice. Yeah, maybe White is, is better here. Uh, maybe I can take. Now, if you take with a Rook, maybe I can go Bishop C1 uh, to bother you a little there. If you take with a Pawn, maybe I can attack this Pawn somehow. I don't know if that's... If that's possible, something like rook b7 and then go, go c4. Or maybe I'm letting you play rook e4 now. Yeah, maybe I should not let you do that. It's possible. Anyway, uh, we have to compare, right? We have to compare between different options. And I think that the other option is, is much stronger because you stay also in the middle game. So you can actually play for an attack also if you play in the way that we were saying. If, you, if we take and uh, we regroup our bishop to, to c3. I'm pretty sure this is the best way to go, because I, I do think that we can play for an attack. One nice plan for white here is to play something like double rooks and then go e5. What, no matter what black plays, they will have an issue with his pawn in the end. It's a very strong plan against the Benko. Uh, another idea might be to push h4, h5 at some point. Anyway, uh, any other comment? Some other, perhaps, uh, suggestion. E5, a lot of people were saying. E5. And I think E5 is, is possible. But I won't take on E5, you know. I won't take like this because you can take on E7. I won't take like that because you will play D6. Uh, any seasoned Benko player would play something like Bishop F5 here. Uh, we, I, I won't touch that pawn. I'll try to play around it and create counterplay. I'll put my knight on D4, for example. So I'm not convinced that uh, white is much better here. What about knight xb5 first and then e5? Okay, 
I think that's much better, yeah, because you remove my knight from the board and you push e5. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a possibility. Aha, what would I play against that? What if I just stick to my plan of uh, attacking on the queen side? What to play here? Rook b8, maybe? Try to take and play queen b5? I guess it's good for me if we swap pieces, right? g5, some uh, tactical magician says g5? When you want to play g5? Here? g5? That's very surprising. But if you say so, maybe they will take on f6, though. Well, and what will happen next? Your king is not in any issues here? Maybe. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I don't see any big problem for black here after rook b8. There must be some Benko player uh, here in this, uh, uh, in this class today. Somebody who knows about the Benko with the black pieces. Uh, you, you must know more about this than I do, but I would say a black is more or less okay here. Um, well, I don't know what else to, to say about this. I'm just feeling that once black is able to swap pieces and attack this pawn, they will have come to play. Ah, I think no one plays the Benko now. I don't know. I thought the Benko was still popular. Uh -huh. Okay, so maybe you don't get to this kind of position. Anyway, uh, you can have your own uh, perspective on, on this exercise. My perspective is that once I'm bringing my bishop to c3, it will defend the pawn on b2. I will not have any issue whatsoever with this pawn. And at the same time, I'll be ready to go e5 later on. All right, I'll bring up the next one. Let's see. Something similar to the Benko, but uh, but still a bit different. Let's see here. All right, so you're playing with the white pieces. I'll just ask you for two moves this time. Okay, I'll ask you just for two moves. But I'll give you, yeah, two minutes. Okay, L008, you got it. You play the same way as Grandmaster Predke. Mega Charge Rex, Pikachu, you got it. Good work. Chess Ryo. Okay. Um, some people want to sacrifice. I'm not convinced about that sacrifice, you know. I see you, your idea, but I'm not uh, completely convinced. Hint. Uh, improve the piece. <laughs> Today's topic. Improve the pieces. So many sacrifices. Wow. That's surprising. So, Guinea Pig and Hong Pao, you also got it. It seems this was the easiest one so far. Okay, I'm happy for all of you. And I'm happy for everybody else also who is uh, putting in some effort to find the best way here with the white pieces. So, Predke with white and with the black pieces, uh, I think Turkish Grandmaster Sanal. So a lot of people got it. That's great. Sprite ball, you also got it. Nice. Blue Ocean, you had a first move, but I think the second move is not strictly necessary. I think you're swapping a piece uh, which is more active than your opponent's piece that you're swapping. So, uh, okay. If you like uh, Mega Charge uh, Rex, uh, you can explain this one, okay? Uh, so uh, I want I got my rook with the worst piece, so I decided to play rook a three. Uh huh. They played knight g seven in the game. And then rook b three and rook b five is very hard to stop for black. Sure. Nice. That's uh, that's how the game went. And let me tell you that in the game after knight g seven, rook b three, black played in the game. Bishop a six. And uh, if you like, you can try to, to play play out the rest here. I mean, they're giving up a pawn, so your first instinct should be to just accept it, right? You cannot use the rook anymore, uh, the, the rook plan. But you can probably, exactly, you can just accept the sacrifice. And here comes a move which I like very much. Um, but it's not about the strategy anymore. It's just about tactics. But I like this move very much. Because... Uh, I think I have noticed that uh, some people, like their biggest fear is that they will lose the pawn on f2 with check. It's some kind of, of drama that we have, I mean, chess players, that they will take on f2 with check. 
but it's not the end of the world. The Russian Grandmaster noticed that. Uh, yeah, exactly. You got it. That's exactly what happened in the game. He noticed that he, he won't lose because they take on F2. Now, on the other hand, Black has a lot of troubles here coming up. So in the game, they played in Rook D7. I guess he wanted to stay with the Rook on the F file, but if he did that, what would have happened if he just stayed? Anyone? Maybe just Rook F3, swap pieces? Or maybe something else? Or maybe, can, can you see some... Wacky Hill says Rook F3. Yeah, I think so. I think Rook F3, that's a good uh, use of this Rook, right? Rook takes, we can take with the Bishop, and then we can put the Knight on, on E4, and we have a very strong passer. Uh, this must be very bad for Black. So in the game they played after Bishop D7, or Rook H3 says Wacky Hill. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Rook, Rook H3 also. Interesting, targeting the Bishop on H6. In the game they played Rook D7, and Knight B5, Bishop takes... Rook takes uh, white had a huge advantage, knight f5. Now they played queen f3. It's a good thing this rook is protected, right? And after queen takes, pawn takes, white went on to win. So what we have seen here is that white had a lot of well-placed pieces. Some people here were saying knight a3 to play knight b5. But in my opinion, the knight is better placed on c4 than on b5. I think the more to the center, the stronger the knight. So we have no reason to uh, regroup this knight, I think. And the other pieces are also well-placed. The only piece which is not doing anything is the rook. So rook a3, no matter what happens, it's great to have control of the third rank also. It's some kind of, you know, Petrosian prophylactic move. Uh, but okay, we also have a concrete plan here like uh, like we had explained by Mega Charts Rex, the rook would like to come to, to b5. So when I looked at this, you know, they played knight 7 and we saw rook b3 and black had already serious uh, problems. But when I looked at this, I asked myself also, what would have happened if I had taken on e5? So I looked at bishop takes e5. Some people were saying this move. And I see your idea. You want me to take to play d6, and there's going to be threat here, threat there, threat here, and so on. However, uh, black is not forced to take. Black can play here instead bishop a6, I think. And uh, I don't know what to do now. Or bishop f5, is tactical magician saying, but I think this looks more practical, no? So I think bishop takes e5 backfires. Maybe you can take with a knight, but I think that actually the bishop was more... I mean, I would like to end up with a knight on e5 instead. I would I would prefer to end up with a knight there than with a bishop. I think the knight is stronger. So if you play like this, then I'll probably take. And I don't trust this 100%. d6, you would say here, well, what would I play with black here? Bishop f5 says a tactical magician. Here, bishop f5? Yeah, maybe. Maybe you're right. Bishop takes, queen takes, and I think black has... Well, I wouldn't say everything under control, but uh, maybe white is clearly better after rook takes e5. Yeah, this pawn is very strong. So we will have to look for something better here after knight takes e5. But we have to take, of course, d6. Can we play bishop e7 loses? Or is there some... Oh, rook a6. Okay, ni nice, nice. That's, that's a nice move, rook a6. Because again, white can, of course, get back the material, but if we're able to eliminate that uh, pawn. That's great news for us, right? This cannot be that bad for, for black, I think. It must be better than the other variation. Or, or maybe bishop b7 is possible also. Or maybe, maybe this is also possible. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. It, it's interesting. It's an interesting variation. But what, what he played in the game, I think it's more a clear cut. What he played in the game was was better, uh, rook a3. However, I was asking myself, what happens here if black plays, instead of knight g7, they play bishop d7? Because if I play bishop d7, I'm actually not letting white play rook b3 due to uh, bishop takes a4, right? So, what do you think white should play here? So, any idea? Aha, now we can take on e5, exactly. That's what I was thinking, because now there is no bishop a6 anymore. So after pawn takes, I think now we can play d6, and I think this is very promising for white. And also you can see that with the rook on a3, uh, there might be some later you know, issues with, uh, with the rook coming to attack, uh, depending on black's play. So I think that's, the, that's perhaps the reason why in the game, after move rook a3, black didn't want to play bishop d7. I think they were simply a bit scared of this move. Bishop takes e5. Because uh, in this kind of situation, as you can see, all white pieces wake up here. Um, they will get back to the exchange. 
and they will have a very strong passport. So that's the way I, I see it. And that might make might explain why he played in the game night g7. However, in this case, I mean, now, again, this is not that strong anymore. I guess now we can take. And there is something with the bishop coming here, right? We can play something like rook. Well, rook where? Rook a6, maybe. So that you can put the bishop on e6. So somehow black defended against this plan of bishop takes e5. However, they didn't defend against that plan. So it's something about flexibility also. And one last observation. If we play here the move bishop d7, you're preventing rook b5. But if I'm not mistaken, you can play here rook. Oh, I'm, I'm hanging the pawn. Sorry, sorry. I'm hanging also this pawn. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say rook b6, but, but that's right. Yeah, I can just take also. So, yeah, that's basically it. Rook a3, improve, like the Russian chess school says, no? Improve your worst piece. Um, something like that. Yeah. And this is the best way in which we can use this rook. I mean, it would be senseless to play something like queen c2 and rook a1. It's clear that the rook is much more powerful along the third rank. So, any other comment, or I will just uh, continue with, with my next uh, example. Again, what should I do again? The, the quiz, you mean? I don't think so. No. Well, if, if you like. But then very quickly now, because uh, we already looked at this, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it just uh, th 30 seconds then. Okay, we do chessable learning here. Learning by repeating, okay? Yeah, all right. <laughs> you got it, everybody. Yeah, excellent. Okay, two seconds. Yeah, it's just right. You were indeed the first one here. So just right, you make a Charles L08. I, I don't have uh, f f strength to pronounce everybody who got it, but it's basically everybody. So, nice. Let's continue. Let's bring up something different here. Uh, we have a Queen's Gambit, uh, you know, the classical Queen's Gambit. Somehow there was some trade on C4 and Black took with the pawn. Yeah, this is a game with white pieces Moroni and playing Black Jancel. In this game, it's white to play. I would like to know the best way to go with white. I'll only ask you for two moves here. And I think by using simply uh, common sense, you will get this one. So only one minute 30. Use common sense and you will uh, succeed on this one. Here we go. Yeah, Queen's Gambit. Uh, classical Queen's Gambit, I would say, is this. I get your point, Girir, but uh, I don't think that's the best choice. Okay? L008, Lele, one, two, three, four. All of you want to play like that? But I don't think it's the best way to go. I don't think so, but we'll see. Interesting choice by Chess Rayo, some kind of blockade. I see what you mean, but I think I will give you back that pawn very soon. Oh, nobody's saying the move that I want. Nobody. That's too bad. Nobody plays like the Italian Grandmaster. What happened here? Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Can we do it again? Yeah, sure, but first we should speak about uh, the things that you're saying. So, let's see, let's see. Interesting, uh, the fact that so many people want to play e5 here. I'm surprised. Tory Chess, Blue Ocean and Angel, you're dropping a pawn, aren't you? You're giving away a pawn here. Addy Chess and Mega Charles Rex, you're very close, but you're dropping a pawn. Or, or is that a sacrifice? Oh, it's a pity that Greg Shahade is not around. I'm pretty sure Greg, Greg would get this one. Because it's, yeah, somehow like a move from an experienced player, what we have here. All right. So let's uh, do this uh, <laughs> half sack, half brando. Let's do this step by step. Let's start with. Uh, the people who are saying knight h4 to play knight f5, that's a terrific idea, excellent idea, but okay, you're dropping this pawn. I don't think it's that's justified, you know. You don't have so many people left to, to attack. Knight f5, 
I'll take. I don't know if I can take the second pawn also, but let's say I can't. Okay, I'll play something like rook e3. I don't honestly believe that uh, that I have any troubles here in this position. But maybe I should take the pawn. Yeah, yeah, you will say. Why not take it? Yeah, maybe I should take it. So, let's go back. Let's see again. e5, some people are saying this is a very typical plan. You, will, you would like to play knight e4, and you will put the knight on d6. Okay, I understand perfectly. The problem for you is that I'll play knight e7, and if you play knight e6, I will seriously consider to take on d6. And I don't think that black is doing that badly in this kind of, of position. Um, it's a typical defensive exchange sacrifice on d6. I think this is okay for, for black. Uh, but okay, maybe there is some other way to play. Maybe I can play something like knight, knight c8 also. Let me know if I blunder something. Else I think knight c8 should also be working here. I'm not convinced by this. I play this stuff myself with white. Uh, I know more or less how this works. I, I don't think this is the best version that you can get. Knight c5, some people are saying. Oh, did I, did I drop the exchange here? Oh, maybe I did. No, I don't. Right? I can play rook d5. Um, yeah. I'm not convinced that uh, white is cl clearly better here in this position. Also, I can attack this pawn, maybe knight f5. So, I'm not uh, sure this is the best way to go. d5, some people are saying, I understand perfectly, you want to play e5, you want to put the knight on d4, play f4, attack, and so on. The only problem is that I can also give material. I can also give back, you know. I mean, I can give back. You gave a pawn, here you can have it back. Knight e4. So, if you take, you won't get to that scenario anymore, will you? With a f4 plan and so on. So, what you say, Ryan? Knight e4. Okay, but you're dropping this pawn. Oh, you're going to take the chains. I see what you mean. Okay, okay. Let's see here if we can understand this properly. Yeah, your idea is, I think it's excellent. So, queen takes. You're going to play knight c6. I have a few pawns, though, but maybe it's not enough. Queen f6, intermediate move. Does it make any sense? Knight takes e4, pawn takes e4. Knight takes d8. It seems like that. Yeah, it seems like you're winning material here. This this is not enough for me, right? No, I don't think so. Um, so what would I play here instead? If I lose that pawn, I better not enter this variation, right? If I if I lose, so I better not take. I better take here instead. You'll take back, I guess, and I'll play something like b4. Are you sure you have sufficient uh, compensation here, Ryo? I mean, you don't have the f pawn anymore, which would have been very useful. Right? And I'm about to, to go forward with my pawn. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not so convinced about this. You have some initiative, safe to say. Maybe you can play for some attack on the king side and so on. But uh, maybe not enough. Maybe we should look for something better, no? We can have this like a plan B. Also, I would like to ask all of you. Is there a reason to rush with white? Do we have to rush here, pushing e5, pushing d5? Does black have a lot of active options here? I don't think so, no. I think we have things under control. But um, I think there is a piece that we should improve here. Aha, you're very close, uh, Kugel says. The tactical magicians, you're very close. You know which piece we're speaking about now. Aha. <laughs> yeah, now we, I get only moves with that piece. Yeah, okay, Kugel says. Your, your last move is the right one. But if you like, we can do this again. Yeah, people will probably want to try again. So let's do this again, guys. You know which move you should avoid, okay? I mean, we, we, you know which moves you shouldn't use. So I'll give you only one minute. By common sense, you should be able to find the best move here, okay? You drop the pawn on e4, Wacky Hill. Don't do that. Uh, Mega Charles Rex and Adi Chess, you're very close. I think I will play queen b6 on that move. On your move, I'll play queen b6. So that I'm, I'm threatening to play b4. All right? But you're very close. Yeah, L008, you got it. That's right. Uh, some people are repeating the move e5. But I told you it wasn't the right choice. Don't play that. Okay, Google Chess, you were very close. No reason to play e5, though. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, interesting choices here, but I think Hong Pao also got it. Yeah, so L008 and Hong Pao, I think you're the lucky ones, or what should I say? The successful ones, because you're the ones who are playing just like Grandmaster Moroni in this game. And I'm pretty sure that he played in the right way. So let's uh, listen to Hong Pao. You can uh, show us on this one, Hong Pao, how to play with white here.
aha, queen e3, the queen was not doing anything, and uh, I mean, really, on c1, once on e3, it's protecting this pawn on d4. And now, basically, what, whatever black plays, no matter what black plays, in the game, they played here the move rook e8, I think, or rook e7, rook e7 they played. No matter what they play, our next move, uh, Hong Pao, exactly. That's the point here. We don't want to rush with d5 or e5. We first want to try our luck in a kingside attack. I mean, if you play uh, the, the Italian, for example, or, or the Rai Lopez with the white pieces, of course, you're familiar with this situation also. You just try to attack. And also, Queen and Knight is a good attacking team, right? Black played in the game, Bishop c8. You can see that they take um, prophylactic measures. Now, Knight f5 is not possible because in that case, well, we are blundering the pawn on on e4, right? They'll take and they'll take on e4. So, again, the same spirit here, the same spirit. We want to play knight f5, I guess with this knight perhaps. So, we have to play a preparatory move first. So, what do you think, Hong Pao? What do you think uh, white played here? Which is the best preparatory move here? You can't play f3, l. You're dropping the knight. Or maybe you meant something else. Yeah, Wacky Hill, you got it. Yeah, Hong Pao, you got it too. That's what he played in the game. Nice. So that now the rook is protecting the pawn and we're ready to go knight f5. As you can see, there are already concrete threats such as knight x8, 6 and a knight on f6 might be in the art. Black played rook d e8. And now I think that what Moroni calculated in the game, he was looking at this variation. Knight here, knight x. That's the first thing anybody will look at. He will check this variation. He will say, okay, is this endgame, is it good enough? He would say, maybe not. They'll play something like rookie six. And also, I mean, black is more or less solid here. And if queens are off, uh, black might even be better. Who knows with this uh, queenside pawn majority. So he said, no, I don't think so. I shouldn't uh, play knight h5. Now he played the move that many of you wanted to play. Now he played it because now it's different. Now he played e5. Exactly. Because after knight e5, as you can see, black is not in time to sack on d6 anymore. So now we can go knight f5 or knight e4. And this would be, be very troublesome for black. I think there are even concrete threats here. Rook e6, maybe now we can even play, I don't know, maybe even knight e6 or, well, maybe there is something better. I don't know. I would love to play something like h4, h5 and then play queen g4, preventing rook uh, g6. But uh, rook e4 says uh, girl. Okay. Interesting to bring more pieces to the attack. But I mean, even knight e6, I was saying to you that this didn't uh, make sense because, uh, yeah, black can always sacrifice there and so on. But now it's different. This time it's different, right? Now it doesn't work because all the rooks came off also. So white is uh, mating here almost. You see? So the plan is okay. The plan is good to play e5 and bring a knight to d6, but it depends on the on the concrete position. So I don't know what, what's your impression here, but I think that they played in a very good way in the game. Queen f3, black played rook d e8 and here white noticed that the time was sorry they played e5 I, I got it wrong here sorry give me one moment queen f3 rook d8 e5 now the time was right they, for that reason they play knight h7 instead aha and just like hongpa was saying knight f5 knight takes rook e6 and knight e6 yeah here we go you see uh, big advantage for white and the black didn't uh, manage to sack that he had to play rook e7 White played a4, starting to play on the whole board. White had a huge advantage and later on went on to win. Aha. So, yeah, yeah, we will do one more. We will do one more. But uh, let's check this from the very beginning. I want that, I would like everybody to, to understand what's going on here. White has very well placed pieces. You could say all these pieces are well placed. Only the queen is a little passive. We are considering to go d5, we are considering to go e5. We have this plan of putting the knight on f5. However, uh, there is no big rush here. And from all these plans, probably this is the most interesting plan. But for that to work, we must protect the pawn somehow. And that can be done with the queen. Some people were saying queen c3. Some people were explaining that queen f4 might be a reason why white didn't play this. Another reason that I thought about was queen b6 so that we can go b4 maybe. I mean, here it seems that black is helped to speed up, you know, their counterplay on the, on the queen side. So... It seems smarter to play queen e3. Why not queen d2? Well, queen d2, you're putting your queen in the on the default. So 
whenever you play knight s4, I will be considering to take. I mean, after all, I have some pass pawns here. So what would I play with black here? I don't know. If anyone can see some candidate move, queen v6 maybe, targeting this pawn. What would you like to play now? Now I'm also about to play b4. But it's not the same thing if you play queen e3 and they play queen b6. I think here it's different, no? For some reason, this would be different. Maybe now I can go uh, e5 in, in this case. Well, interesting move, right? Maybe they should have played this instead. Or is there anything, anybody who can see something here for white? Is there some reason why knight h4, rook takes d4, knight f5, rook takes d1, queen takes b6, rook takes e1, king h2. Maybe you should play king h2 then, so that you just put the queen away, king the king away. Oh, knight e5, says uh, uh, Gir, Giri. But if rook takes d4, what's the tactic here? I don't uh, understand. Knight takes e6, but then I can take on d1, right? Or is he somehow winning? That's why I was saying that maybe if you play in, in Petrosian style, if you... Oh, okay, but this also looks interesting. But if you play King H... King H2 here, isn't this a bit a bit clever to play like that? And you can play this maybe next turn? I think so. Yeah, I'm not sure about two rooks for queen. Yeah, it's it's a complex position. I, I'm not... Once there are passed pawn on the board, I don't know. It's different. So maybe maybe that's a possible way to play. But still, that doesn't matter so much. The important thing is simply to understand. We have this queen, which is not doing anything, really. This is a good moment to use her to protect his pawns. And later on, we will go for an attack. What? Should I do? Should we do this again? Well, if, if you say so. If you say so. Yeah, but then we should do it very quickly. Okay. I'll put only 20 seconds then. Okay? 20 seconds. Uh, here we go. Okay, a lot of people got it, no? Excellent. I'll do the last one for today. Let's do the last one. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, congratulations to all of you who got it. So, queen e3, preparing to go knight h4. The most flexible choice here. Uh, no, first was uh, Chess Ryu was first on this one. All right, this is the last one. Maybe you know of this one, I don't know. Um, who knows? I'll ask you for Black's uh, best uh, move here. Um, let's see if we can do this. I'll give you one minute. Super familiar. Okay, if you say so. I don't know. I guess it depends on your... Oh, 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 oh sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, some technical inconvenience here. Um, let's see. Okay. No, this is not an end, um, I think. Um I'll tell you very soon. Let me just uh, put up the quiz first. Uh, one moment, please. Here, there. Yeah, this one got here. Okay. I'll ask you for four moves, okay? So, uh, take your time. That's my first hint. Uh, this is a game between Vachier with white pieces and Yu Zhang Yi playing black. It's actually a blitz game, but uh, Yu Zhang Yi, well, both of them played very well, but especially Yu Zhang Yi. Okay, you got it, uh, Wacky Hill. That's exactly what Yu Zhang Yi played. Uh huh. Nice. So, at the chest, you play the most natural move. And I'm pretty sure that Yu Zhang Yi considered this, but he didn't like it. Okay, so a lot of different moves here. Careful, if you move your pawns, you might uh, automatically weaken your position. This is perhaps not a position for uh, calling for dy dynamic uh, pawn breaks and so on. I don't think so. You have to be a little more modest in this position. Okay, Subham, you got it, almost. How is it not bishop f5? Well, we will have to call Zhu Zhang Yi and ask. But it's because he didn't play like that. Hmm. <laughs> We'll see. So, so far, Wacky Hill, first place, second place, I would say it's uh, Subham because you were very close. You got the right idea here. But uh, if you want a piece of advice, stay away from pawn moves in this uh, on this occasion. Don't weaken yourself uh, too much here. 
All right. Uh, the engine. How is it the engine? I don't follow. Uh, anyway. The human person, you were also close, but it's illogical to take with a queen, isn't it? You're going against the, the, the whole plan. So, okay, Chess Raya, you found it, you found it also. Uh, let's listen first to, to Wacky Hill. Um, so, what's your uh, plan here with the black pieces? I thought knight g8, and then... Why? Um, so, it frees the queen to go to f6 to protect against checks on the long diagonal. Aha, uh -huh, you're right. That's it. It's as simple as that. I mean, I think there are two things you should consider here. One, we have a fianchetto structure, but there is no fianchetto bishop on g7. So automatically, this is a danger to us that white will work on the uh, long diagonal, create some mating idea and so on. So it would be great to bring a queen to, to that diagonal. Also, white has no dark square bishop, so they cannot really fight against this plan. And the other thing which I think is important, once you're sitting with this kind of position, you're playing on the last three ranks, it's important to use the space in the best possible way. And I have seen this in games by Karpov, for example, very intelligent with using... There is a famous game, Spassky Karpov, where Spassky had a passed pawn on the d-file, Karpov managed to swap queens, and later on he uh, regrouped his pieces in a very smart way. Maybe you have seen that game. Well, in the 70s, I think. So knight g8 is what Yu Yang play, Gi played in this blitz game. Just like Wacky Hill says, the idea is to bring the queen to f6, and in this way also we're able to connect the rooks. In the game, Vachier replied here, rook takes e8. After bishop takes e8, yeah, if you said queen takes e8, you're going against this plan, right? I mean, maybe now I can give check first, and then I can put my rook here and perhaps play c5. So, um, it's better to take with the bishop, actually, even if it's clear that the bishop should go back. After rook e1, they played here... And bishop d7 first. I don't think there is a big difference. I think you could play queen f6 without any issues. I fail to see any problem with that. But okay. Uh, I think maybe what uh, Yu Yangi wanted was to play bishop g4, provoke the move h3. And now he played queen f6 because now it, it's also coming with a threat, right? So actually, white is hardly better anymore in this position. You can also start to see that black is somehow having kind of a good bishop, no? White has many pawns on light squares and so on. So that's how the game went. Uh, and later, gradually, uh, Yu Yangi got the better of it here. King h2, b6, rook e4, rook e8. Yeah, rook f4. You can see that Vacher is playing for an attack, but uh, what do you think, Wacky Hill? Where should the black queen go? Yeah, not so difficult, no? Yeah, you're right, somehow. Yeah. We should stay. <laughs> stay on this diagonal. Exactly. So there is only one way in which we can stay. Exactly, you got it. Nice move. It's not because he wants to take this pawn. It's simply because he wants to keep control of this diagonal and avoid any attack at his king. g4, h6, you can see, no way they will take this pawn. They are interested in preventing, let's say, something like knight g5. Uh, g5, pawn takes, knight takes, knight f6, king g2. And I like very much the next move by Yu Yangi. Okay, this was an Armageddon game, so he was favored by a draw. It's, it's good to know also that <laughs> that's why he didn't play rookie one. I think that's the wrong choice, uh, Lucky Hill, because you're not... Uh, I mean, you're, th you're threatening my knight, but you're not giving me mate here, right? Or, may or maybe you're right. Yeah, maybe that's a good move. Uh -huh. Maybe he didn't have time uh, to, to think here. Uh, what would happen in this case? Yeah, you're right. Maybe you this is a good move after all. Okay, I thought it was not necessary, but it's actually hard to play with right here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. This is coming. This also. So probably that was good. But I like the way he played in the game. He played queen e1 instead. Because he knew that the endgame was very favorable for him. And okay, the draw was favorable also. Queen e5 forcing the exchange of queens. And then black went on to win. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so let's go back to the beginning. What we have seen here is that white appeared to be slightly better here. Play for the long diagonal. Double the rooks and so on. Some people were saying here knight f5. And I think this is the wrong way to go, because now in the first place I can take, and you can almost not take with the bishop, right? Because then I'll double your pawns. So you're forced to take with the queen, and that's not what we wanted. And here, for example, what white could play. They could carry out this exchange, which might be a good idea in this structure, to get rid of this bishop. No? So bishop takes, you can even play g4 here, play a bit aggressive, they cannot take it due to the check on d4. 
have to go back. You can see that the black queen is missing on this diagonal. Rook e1, queen d8, and you could even play here the move g5 so that you don't let them play queen f6. I'm not completely sure how big is white's advantage here, but for sure I, I'd prefer to play with the white pieces here in this position. But maybe there are some other ways you can play also. And then other people were saying bishop f5. If you play bishop f5, then it must be very dangerous for you rook e1, isn't it? So, ta tactically, I don't think this is a good idea for you to play like this. I mean, if you play something like queen d7, something might, might hang here in some variation. No? I don't know if I can just win a pawn by taking and knight takes and just take here. No, but I, I should look for something more, right? So maybe something like knight e4 also looks promising, something like this. I wouldn't like to play black in this position, honestly. Queen e2 seems to be a threat here. Oh, you just win the pawn. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. But okay, no matter what happens here, this should be unpleasant for, for black. So this is a very smart way of playing knight g8. Very smart way. And I mean, this is a blitz game, so even more uh, impressive by Zhu Zhangyi to find this move so quickly. So what he's doing here, like I was telling you in the very beginning, uh, look for ways in which the pieces can help each other. So this time it was the knight which was helping the queen. In the previous example, it was the white queen which was helping the knight, right? We played queen e3 to protect the pawn on d4 so that the knight could go to f5. So it's some kind of teamwork no? in this position. So uh, knight g8, okay, I, I know what you will say. We should do this again. Okay, I'll do this very quickly then. I'll do this very quickly so that we can finish with this example. Um, yeah, okay, very, very quickly. We'll do this again. Learning in a repeated way, in chessable fashion. Here we go. You have only... 30 seconds for this mission. Okay, Chess Ryo, Hong Pao, Mega Trots, Rex, Wacky Hill, Subham. You got it. Some people rushed with Queen F6. I can give you half a point if you like. But maybe I can go 95 there, though. Did you check that? Or that doesn't matter? Maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah, you can move the Queen to, to D4. So if you played it on the third move, it's okay. You're excused. It's okay also to play that in that way. The people who were saying here, 98, uh, 98, rook takes, bishop takes, rook e1. If you were by chance were saying queen f6, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I think there is not a big difference between these two moves, queen f6 and bishop d7. Maybe this is even more precise, but okay. I mean, this was a blitz game, so we cannot be that harsh. Maybe 95, but okay, you can play bishop d7, and it seems you can put your queen here. So no issues, really. So no matter how you play it, this is the way to go. Try to seize the long diagonal with a queen because we are exploiting the fact that there is no Dorsko bishop. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Huh? See you in two weeks.